Let's make this bird pop using nothing more than Lightroom editing. As always, you can follow along this Lightroom tutorial by downloading the RAW file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. Right away, you can already spot some noise in the image. That's because I shot this at a rather high ISO, but that's not an issue. The first thing we want to do is to go down into the details panel and we want to apply some AI denoising. So simply click on that denoise button. And I'm not going to change anything. I'm leaving the amount at 50 and let's click enhance. Next up, I want to crop the image because I think the areas on each side of the bird are not that interesting. So let's crop them out and create a portrait mode photo, keeping the bird nicely centered. Okay. So with the noise and cropping out of the way, we can do some basic adjustments. So let's open up the basic panel. What I want to do is to adjust the white balance, making this whole shot a little bit colder because I want to create this dark blue look for it. So let's tone it down a little bit. Then I want to reduce the overall contrast. I'm going to start this by bringing down the highlights all the way down, which will reveal more details in the background. I'm also going to drop the whites Okay, I'm also going to raise the shadows, which will give us more details in the bird itself. I'm also going to raise the blacks for the same effect. And again, this will just lessen the overall contrast, but don't worry about that since we're going to target very specific areas with masking later and bring back contrast to the image. I want the base image to be sharp and therefore let's bring up the texture. I'm also going to raise the clarity very gently at the same time, I'm going to bring down the dehaze, which will kind of brighten up the whole shot a bit. So I'm not going to touch the vibrance or saturation. That means we're pretty much done with the basic adjustments. We can compare the image to before real quick. You can see it's a little bit colder, but the most noticeable thing is the contrast, which we just have minimized. Now we want to target areas locally with masks. And my idea for this shot is to keep the subject rather bright with a natural color tone, which makes it stand out from the dark coat background. Also, I'm going to create a light effect coming in from the left side of the image. And I also want to emphasize the light on the subject's left side right here. Let's start with the background. I'm going to use a linear gradient coming up from the bottom part. I want the bottom part of the image to be the darkest area. Of course, we are affecting the subject, which is something we really don't want to do. So we need to subtract and choose select subject. And due to all these three branches, Lightroom will have issues properly selecting the subject. So we will need to suffer through the masking process here a bit. I want to also remove these three branches. Uh, that's going to really suck, but let's try using an objects mask and let's activate the rectangle select mode. And with that objects mask, I'm just going to draw rectangles around the three branches and hope Lightroom will detect them. So I'm also going to subtract with the brush. Let's make it a little smaller and try to clean up these areas here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is to simply drop the exposure heavily and thus we're making the background darker. I'm also going to drop the temperature to already begin introducing some coldness to the image, but I keep this rather subtle because I will be layering multiple different background masks on top of each other. So we don't want to overdo it right away with the first mask. But so far that's looking good. Let's continue. I'm going to use another linear gradient. This time I'm placing it outside of the image like this. So I'm covering the whole area. Then let's again subtract the subject and let's also subtract all those tree branches once more. Again, this is just super annoying to do, but it's really worth it. Again, just using the object selection here. And we're going to fine tune it with the brush. So the bottom part with all these branches is looking super weird. I want to add another linear gradient kind of overlapping these edges just to have a more natural fade because I won't be able to mask out all these branches at the bottom. So this will give us a natural look without the mask being too obvious. Now with this mask covering the whole background, I'm going to make it a lot colder by pulling down the temperature, introducing this blue color style. Of course, the saturation does start to become a problem. So we want to counter that by also pulling down the saturation just a bit. 
kind of balancing the colors a little more this way. All right, that's looking good so far. Now let's continue introducing some more shadows to this image. I'm using another linear gradient coming in from the right side like this. I am kind of slightly overlapping the subject here, but of course I don't want to affect the subject itself. So let's again subtract, select subject. This, in this case, I don't have an issue with the tree branches being selected. I just want to pull down the exposure, making the right side of the image quite a bit darker this way. Perfect. I can also pull down the whites, further making it darker without affecting the darkest parts. We do need to adjust that linear gradient a little. All right. Then let's use another linear gradient for the top. You already can spot some shadows up in this area. I want to target this particular spot. So using a linear gradient, I'm just overlapping this darker part and I'm going to further drop the exposure and make the top darker this way. We can also pull down the whites, again, making it darker without affecting the darkest parts. And let's drop the temperature. I think this area up there is still a bit warm, so that should help. Okay. I'm going to do the same for the bottom area. So let's create a new linear gradient covering pretty much all of the bottom like this. I'm just going to bring down the whites in this case to make this darker because otherwise we might end up with some pretty heavy underexposure. Now for that light effect coming in from, from the left side, I'm using a radial gradient and I want to make it big like this. I'm going to rotate it so the light is kind of falling down like this and I'm going to place the center outside of the image. Let's stretch the radial gradient a little further and make it a little bigger. Again, we don't want to make the subject brighter, so we simply need to subtract another subject mask and that's looking good. In here, what I'm going to do is to bring up the exposure. So you see the tree branch is affected by this mask. I don't think it's an issue. I actually think it looks quite good with that light effect on that tree branch. So I'm going to keep it in for now. I'm also going to increase the highlights, making this effect stronger. Let's also pull up the whites. But that's looking good. Still not quite happy with the bottom part. Let me use another linear gradient and target a huge part of the bottom area. I'm even overlapping the subject very slightly in this case. And let me further pull down the exposure, making the whole bottom darker. I'm also going to drop the highlights and the whites to make it even darker this way. And I think at this point it looks pretty good and we also need to work on the subject. So let me start with a brush and with the brush, I'm going to target the bird's eye like this. I'm just going to brush over once or twice and I'm going to start by increasing the contrast. Let me also deactivate the, the brush handle so we can see the difference. I'm going to show auto edit pins and click on never. So now we can nicely see what's happening. Then let's bring up the highlights. I'm also going to bring up the shadows just a little bit. This will really help with the eye since the eye is made up mostly of shadows. Let's bring up the whites. This also really helps with the yellowish border. And then I'm going to bring up the temperature, giving it a little more warmth. And of course we can make it look sharper by using some texture and some clarity. All right, this is looking really, really good. Then let's work on the subject itself. I'm going to use a simple select subject mask for that. Here, I want to pull up the texture, making the whole subject sharper. I'm also going to add some clarity. Then let's go up. I'm going to add a bit of contrast for more punch. And let's bring up the whites very gently, making the highlights of the bird a little brighter this way. Just need to be careful with its beak. And we could bring up the temperature, kind of neutralizing that very subtle blue color cast in the bird's feathers. But that's looking pretty good, I think. Now for that light effect I was talking about earlier, let's use another subject mask. And this time let's subtract a linear gradient and I'm taking out all the parts from the right side. Actually, let's bring back the handles for the masks and let's adjust this linear gradient a bit. 
just want to target a very tiny portion of the feathers like this. And to create this light coming in from the left side, I'm going to pull up the exposure and I'm going to pull up the whites. And just like that, we created a more 3D-like effect on the bird. At this point, what's really bothering me is uh, the saturation of the tree branches. So I'm going to use a color range mask and I'm going to click right in here in this tree branch. This is selecting way more than I want. Let's subtract a subject mask and let's subtract a linear gradient just to clean up this mask a bit. All right, so now we have pretty much the tree branches selected. What I'm going to do is to bring down the saturation a lot because I don't want to have this green tone in this image. All right, now there's one more thing we need to do. You can already see it right here between the bird's tail feather. There is an area that is not affected by the blue tones of the background, which we don't like. So I'm going to use another color range mask. I'm clicking right in here. I am clicking right in here and Lightroom will not do that. I don't know what's going on, but it worked perfectly in Photoshop. Um, okay, I need to work around that. Let's still use a color range mask. Now we have altered the color of the background quite heavily. So that means if I click in here, this should select the yellow parts of the background between the feathers. So let's try this. You can see this works. I don't know why it's not working the other way in Lightroom. You see, we have a solution for that. Of course, we don't want to affect the whole background. That means we're going to intersect this mask and we're going to choose a brush. Then with this brush, let's make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to paint over these areas between the feathers. And we want to make them colder. So just drop the temperature until it fits with the rest of the background like this. All right, and that's it for the masking adjustments. Let me show you the huge, huge transformation from before to after. So now we can do some color grading. Let's go into the color mixer. I wanna work on the saturation for a moment. What I want to do is to bring down the yellow saturation and I wanna bring down the green tones, mainly for the tree branches. And let's slightly drop the blue saturation as well. Kind of creating those muted tones. We can use split toning. Let's go into the mid tones. And here we can add back some blue tones specifically for the mid tones. So let's set up the hue. Uh, let's go with the color right here and let's bring up the amount of saturation. All right, that looks wonderful. Then the final part of the color grading will be happening in the calibration tab because I really love how this looks. So that's something I do for all my images. Bring down the blue primary hue very gently like this and let's raise the saturation. Okay, done. Then we of course also want to sharpen this image. And therefore let's head into the details panel, bring down the radius all the way, increase the details all the way up then very important, hold on the Alt key while adjusting the masking slider. You can see this way, we can nicely target the subject and then let's apply some heavy sharpening on it. All right, great. So that's pretty much it for editing this image. Of course, there are a few things I want to remove. I would do that in Photoshop, but let's try doing it in Lightroom. We're going to use the remove tool up in here. Let's click on remove and we are going to use the generative AI to clean this shot up. And I'm starting with this blurry tree branch at the top, which is super distracting. So we're just going to brush over it. By the way, it would be wise to do this at the start of the editing process. I'm not sure why I do it now, but whatever. Can change that. Now we have selected the upper tree branch. Let's click on remove. That's looking super smooth, perfect. Then let's try to clean up the tree branches in the background right here. I'm roughly painting over them, leaving enough space around the tree branches and hopefully Lightroom can handle this. Let's give it a try. That's quite okay. I'm happy with that. Now there's some weird looking tree branch right here. I had problems removing that earlier. So let's see if it works any better now. It's the same crap that happened before. This is an area which we unfortunately have to clean up in Photoshop. Let me show you how I do it. Right click on the image, go to edit in and choose Photoshop. As always, I'm starting by duplicating that layer by hitting Ctrl J. 
And let's zoom in here. What we can do now is to simply use the clone stem tool and easily get rid of that thing. All right, and I think there we have it. And that's the finished image. Let me know what you think about this dark blue style. If you have any questions left or if you have anything to add, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.